Hi friends, welcome to 90 days to cat series and we are talking today about games and tournaments. Very very important from cat standpoint, also a few other MBA entrance exams. In this part, as a compiled video, we are going to take care of all key types of games and tournaments questions. Primarily, we are dealing with three scenarios, a seed based tournament which includes knockouts, group or league based tournaments including round robin and finally the tabular or point based questions. Let's have a look at the first type, a seed based tournament. Every player is allowed to take a seed or every player is assigned a seed which is nothing but the ranking. So let's say there are 64 players. Generally the number of players is in the power of 2. So 2 to the power, let's say 6. In the first round, first player will play the 64th player, second player will play 63rd player, so on 32 is going to play 33. You can see that the sum of the players playing is equal to 2 to the power n plus 1, 64 plus 1 65, 63 plus 2 65. This is one way to check your answer. So round 1, how many matches? There are 32 matches. There are 32 matches, so 32 players are eliminated. So in round 2, how many players will be there? There are now 32 players. So match 1 will be played by winner of match 1, right? Winner of match 1 between 1 and 64 and winner of match 32, 32 and 33. So similarly, in round 1, there were 32 matches. In round 2, there will be 16 matches, so on and so forth. There are 64 players. And in the end, there will be one player as the winner. There must be 63 games to eliminate the 63 players and make one player as the winner. Always remember, total number of games will be equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. So in this case, total players were 2 to the power 6. Total number of games will be 2 to the power 6 minus 1, which will be 63. There is something called an upset. Whenever a lower seeded player beats a higher seeded player. For example, let's say a seed 1 plays against seed 64 and seed 64 beats seed 1. It's called an upset. Why it's called an upset? It's called an upset because people want seed 1 to win. There are more fans of seed 1. Therefore, when seed 1 gets beaten by seed 64 or a lower seeded player or a lower ranked player, that is called an upset. Let's talk about a very, very important shortcut. Let's say you have to calculate who plays pth match in rth round and this you can do you know let's say when no upsets are there. For example let's say in this case there were 64 players in the beginning. So n is equal to 64. Want to find out who played the fourth match in the third round. Here p is equal to 4 fourth match r is equal to 3 third round. All you have to do is use this simple formula. What is the formula say? n by 2 to the power r minus 1. So 3 minus 1 becomes 2 plus 1 minus p is equal to 4. n is equal to 64. So you put 64 here and this is 4. So this becomes 16 plus 1 minus 4 which is 13. So seed 4 will play seed 13 in this match. Always remember, this is applicable when there are no upsets. So what will you do when there are upsets? Let's take that scenario also. For example, who will meet seed 36 in the semi-finals of a tournament in which 64 players are taking part? Uh, other than 36's matches, there were no upsets. Here 64 players are playing, so n is equal to 64. What happens in the first round? If you divide this into two parts, 32 and 32, these 32 are, you know, are the favorites to win the first round. And these 32 are going to lose the first round if there are no upsets. But clearly there is an upset. Seed 36 is in this part. So in the first round, seed 36 is going to play which player? So P and N by 2 to the power 0 plus 1 minus P. So here p and n plus 1 minus p 36 will lie here in the second part n is 64 plus 1 minus some number p is equal to 36 
so this becomes 65 minus p is equal to 36 so p is equal to 29 in the first round seed 36 will play seed 29 and beat seed 29 so in round 2 if you see seed 29 is going to play which player so again here p will play n by 2 plus 1 minus p in the second round there are 32 players total if you divide into 16 and 16 again 29 will be in the second part so here n by 2 which is 32 plus 1 33 minus p is equal to 29 so p is equal to 4 so in the second round p is equal to 4 is going to play as soon as you know this the question is very very simple now if there are no upsets after this let's say if there were no upsets in the semi-final obviously you will have one two three four these are the top four seeded players which will go into the semi-final if there are no upsets right and the semi-final one is going to you know phase four therefore since seed four is beaten in the second round itself seed 36 will take its space and therefore seed 36 is going to play seed one in this tournament in semi-finals i hope this is clear to you you can go step by step also to understand it very very clearly freeze the screen and read the text on the screen let's move forward and understand what happens in a league based tournament and in round robin so what happens in round robin is let's say there are eight teams and every team has to play every other team so the number of matches will be 8c2 which is 8 by 2 into 7 which is 28 so in round robin if there are n teams and every team has to play every other team the number of ways or the number of matches will be nc2 let's take a look at it through an example to understand it a little better so there are 14 teams in the tournament divided into two pools okay and every pool has seven teams then what happens from these seven the top three teams from each of the pool go to the super six and from that the top four get into the semi-finals and then finals what is the total number of matches played so in games and tournaments you will see this question quite often you know whether it is knockout tournament or round robin you will have to find out the number of matches so what will be the number of matches here in pool a you have seven teams playing in round robin so 7c2 here also 7c2 7c2 what is the value 7 by 2 into 6 so 21 here and 21 here what happens after this from pool a there will be three teams from pool b there will be three teams every team from here plays exactly one team from here so 3c1 into 3c1 right that is how you will select select one team from here select one team from here 3c1 into 3c1 so nine matches after this top four will get into semi-finals there will be two games of semi-finals and one game of final so how many matches in total 42 plus 9 51 plus 3 54 so total number of matches is 54 i hope this is clear to you moving forward what is the least number of points with which a team can possibly advance to the super six round so let's say in the pool a there are one two three four five six seven so what are the teams that will go to the super six team one team two and team three will go to the super six now team three has to go to the super six with least number of points so generally there are three winners of a pool and four loser of, of the pool so these losers are eliminated right if three has to go to the next stage but with the minimum points this three has to play like the other four losers so these five teams will play like losers these two teams will play like winners or the bosses and and three will just get a little lucky to be there in the super six right that's how it will happen right you've seen it in several tournaments a team getting a little lucky sometimes net run rate or any other criteria see the first one has to play one two three four five six six teams and let's say beats all the six so therefore six into two two twelve points talking about second second ranked here second ranked team one two three four five plays five teams beats five teams plays like a winner so these two have won most of their matches one has won all the matches 
2 has won all the matches between these 7 teams there are number of matches will be 7c2 which is 21 and total number of points distributed will be 21 into 2 because if you win there are 2 points given to the winner 0 points to the loser if there is a draw 1 point to both so in every match 2 points are being distributed total number of points is 42 and here total number of points that has been accounted is 22 now these are the 5 players left and how many points are left 42 minus 22 20 points are left now if 3 also has to play like the losers and then you know uh, go to the next round only by luck through net run rate or any other criteria in that case this 20 must be evenly distributed so divided by 1 2 3 4 5 5 players so divided by 5 so with 4 points team 3 can go to the super 6 by being a little lucky similarly the next question what is the maximum possible number of points that can be scored by a team and still be eliminated again have a look at pool a there is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 which team can play the best and still be eliminated that will be team number 4 right team ranked 4 has played the best and yet will be eliminated why because you can only send top 3 teams to the next round so what will happen in this case this ranked 4 team what will they do although they are part of the losers it will play like the top 3 winners so in this game top 4 players will play like the winner this guy played like a winner but became unlucky and therefore could not go to the next stage and there are 3 players who play like losers so this is similar to the last case total number of points in the pool stage for pool A will be 42 let's say 7 loses all the games so then 0 point 6 wins against 7 so 2 points 5 wins against 6 and 7 so 4 points so total 6 points have been distributed out of 42 so total remaining is 36 now all these winners will play all the 4 will play like winners so if I distribute 36 there are 4 teams so 4 number of points with each team is 9 so this also scores 9 scores 9 scores 9 scores 9 team 4 scored the maximum that it could and got a little unlucky because of net run rate or any other criteria and hence could not pass the pool stage so maximum number of points that a team can get and still be eliminated that is point number C that's the third option what is the minimum number of matches that can be won by a team that reaches the finals it's very very interesting see in the pool stage there are seven teams right now in this case it may happen that none of the teams win any of the matches let's say all the all the matches result in a tie then also the top three teams will move to the super six right so here it's not mandatory to win any of the games right because there will be net run rate or any other criteria basis which the top three teams will move to the next round so there are you know three three teams from pool a and three teams from pool b they will play one match with each other now in this case also think about it there are top four players that are decided on the basis of points let's say all these matches again result in a draw then also you will rank the four players basis net run rate or any other criteria so here also let's say all the matches result in a draw you will get the top four players there will be two semi-finals to go to the final must win this game right semi-final is an eliminator in an eliminator you can't you know play a draw there will be a tiebreaker always to reach the final so minimum number of matches that can be won by a team and reach the final the answer is one i hope this is clear to you let's move forward and have a look at another type of question which is point based or point table based caselets so given below is a table uh, at the end of the hockey tournament there are five teams as you can see for each win two points are awarded and for draw one point was given for losing obviously zero point now we also know that south africa spain match was a draw no two teams have the exact same count for win draw loss and australia has won more matches than spain figure out the result of every match from the table given below 
so there are two tables here one is you know the summary table capturing the number of matches played won draw lost and total points and the next which is a little you know elaborate talks about every match so india versus pakistan what is the outcome the diagonal obviously has been crossed because india will not play against india pakistan will not play against pakistan so on and so forth so let's have a look at it there are five players will play in a round robin fashion so number of matches will be 5c2 so 5 by 2 into 4 so total 10 matches will happen in every match two points will be distributed so total number of points will be equal to 20 so 6 plus 6 12 plus 3 15 plus 3 18 so south africa must score two points south africa spain match was draw so spain versus south africa you can write draw here so south africa and spain will also be draw note that there will be a double entry in this table because if one team wins let's say india wins against pakistan pakistan must lose to india so the, whenever you enter a win here you must enter a lose also here otherwise the table will not get completed no two teams have the exact same count for win draw loss right now see india has not lost any match and scored 6 points the possibility can be because there is no losing the possibility will be two wins and two draws right so every team will play four matches so that we can very easily fill india wins two and draws two two into two is four plus two is six pakistan also scores six but obviously pakistan cannot score like two win and two draws because you can't repeat the combination so the possibility in case of pakistan is zero draws three wins and one loss so 3 into 2 is 6 and the number of points have been satisfied now we know that spain definitely played one draw with south africa we also know that australia has more number of wins than spain now in in three points australia could only win one game so one winning and one drawing so australia has played four one win one draw and two losses spain also has to get three points but can't get in this manner because can't repeat this combination so spain can get three points by getting three draws zero win and one loss now south africa has to get two points we know that south africa has played one draw already so the best possible scenario is two draw and two loss zero winning so the summary table is now complete let us now try and use it here we know that india has lost no match and pakistan loses only one match wins all the other match must mean that india wins against pakistan and so winning here and losing here as soon as we know pakistan won all the other matches so pakistan wins against australia so australia lost against pakistan pakistan wins against spain so spain lost against pakistan pakistan wins against south africa south africa lost against pakistan spain will play three draws and one loss so one loss is done so three draws so spain and india is a draw so india spain is a draw spain australia is a draw so australia spain is a draw australia has to win one game since india did not lose any game australia must win against south africa so australia wins against south africa south africa must lose to australia south africa has two draws and two losses so two losses are done so one more draw south africa has to play south africa will play draw with india so india and south africa is a draw now india has to win two games so india will win against australia so australia must lose to india so this table is also complete you know the outcome of each and every game plus you have also calculated the points in this table with that we come to the end of this exercise i hope you've understood each and every type of problem that comes in cat solve more along this path and we'll see you in the next part i hope you're enjoying it take care god bless you all and keep sharing with other aspirants also you know such so that more and more people can be benefited thank you god bless you all